to Sheboygan County Government working for you. My name is Adam Payne, Sheboygan County Administrator and co-host of this program with Chairman Bill Gehring. And today we're very pleased to have some special guests from our Register of Deeds office. First, Ellen Schleicher and Nyla Bourne are both with us today to talk about the roles and responsibilities of Register of Deeds. And if you're wondering what is the Register of Deeds office, whether you're going to be purchasing land, selling land, having a child, getting married, and the list goes on and on, you may need the services of our Register of Deeds office. So welcome both of you. It's good to have you here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you invited for inviting us. Ellen, let's start with you. You're a, a new face to, to county government and, and a refreshing one at that. It's nice to have you aboard. And why don't you share with our viewers a little bit about your background and when you became Register of Deeds and some of your roles and responsibilities as Register of Deeds. Okay. Um, uh, my husband and Michael and I have been married for 27 years. We have four children, live in the town of Lima. Um, I am a former, well, leave of absence worker at Kohler Company. Uh, began the Register of Deeds office last January after being appointed um, by the governor when Darlene Navis um, retired. Um, we belong to Blessed Trinity Church. During my married years and working years I, and raising kids, I attended Lakeland College and got my degree in business. Um, and my role as Register of Deeds is an ongoing learning process. Um, the official role would be, you know, that we have to, by state statutes, record and, and keep our document, keep documents that come in um, safe. And we archive them and index, index them and we assist the public in, um, when they come in to look up their deeds or mortgages or whatever, we, we help them out, trying to help them find out, get information on their land. Mm -hmm. Now you're surrounded by, I know, some great staff. I know you feel real good about the, mm -hmm. the employees you work with. Uh, how many staff do you have in the department? And in general, what's your budget look like? Um, well, with Nyla and I, there's eight of us, mm -hmm. um, eight full-time people. And we have a budget of uh, around $600,000. Um, though um, I would have to say that um, we do not use any dollars, any tax levy dollars. Our, the fees that we charge um, were pretty self-sufficient. Um, so we use no tax dollars and sometimes we can even give some tax, some money back to the county. So Now, and obviously of our 23 departments, uh, Register of Deeds not having to rely on the tax levy is just fantastic. I mean, we'd like to keep it that way as long as possible because mm -hmm. it benefits the taxpayer and you've done a, a nice job. Uh, when, did, when were you appointed by the governor? How long has it been now? I started, I was appointed actually November 24th of 2005, I remember because it was my anniversary. Mm -hmm. um, I started, I uh, was sworn in on January 6th of 2006, okay. um, ran for election in November 7th of 2006, okay. and so I've been there 12 months. So appointed because Darlene left midterm and I just ran successfully and were elected, so very good. Mm -hmm. And as you said, eight staff in total in the department, and Nyla, you've been one of the, the steady individuals in that department. Obviously, people come and go, but when Darlene left, obviously we, we lost someone with tremendous knowledge and who was really, when you thought of the Register of Deeds office, I think you thought of Darlene in the same breath because of her experience there and her tenure there. Mm -hmm. And when she left, obviously a new person coming on who, like all of us, it takes a little while to, to learn the ropes, but Nyla, you've just kept things going seamless, uh, a smooth transition. When did you first start with the Register of Deeds? I started in 1986. I've been there for almost 21 years now. Very good. I have enjoyed working all those years with Darlene and, and now with Ellen. Very so. good. And you have a role with supervision with the, with right. the staff, correct? I'm the deputy and I have also, my title is office manager. I oversee the office, the workings, um, the, uh, when there's questions that come up, if the staff has a question, they usually come to me to see if I can assist them. Um, we try to you know, go with what the statutes say, and if there's anything that we're not sure of, we, all, we always go back to that. But um, the staff is, is very knowledgeable in themselves, and in checking documents over and, and uh, if they have a question they come to me. 
So let's drill down a little bit. You touched very briefly at some of the roles and responsibilities of the office. Mm -hmm. I know you have a close working relationship with the business community. What are some of the, you know, what, what are some of the documents that you predominantly deal with process uh, related to the business community? The, the most often used ones are, would be a deed, mm -hmm. um, which is the document that transfers the property from one person to another. Um, the next would probably be a mortgage. Uh, if there's a lien that they need to put on the property when someone buys property, uh, they do that through a mortgage. There's other ways, but it's most often a mortgage. Um, and then the one that tends to confuse people at times would be the release or satisfaction of mortgage. Uh, they are not real sure what that does. We'll get a call once in a while that'll say, you know, what does this document do? And we explain that it, it simply releases a mortgage that was already put on. And uh, then there's sometimes a new mortgage done, sometimes not. Sometimes it just releases that mortgage. But the banks and the credit bureaus, um, the attorneys, the title companies, all have to come to our office or um, they can search online uh, remotely to see what is in our office as far as mortgages and deeds and if there's any encumbrances on the property that would not allow it to be sold uh, they have to clear that up but they they get all their information from us basically. So it's generally if I'm buying some property or if I'm selling a home <clears throat> it's generally not the individuals involved in that transaction that are coming into your office its office often representatives what of the bank or lenders correct right? yeah usually it's title companies or attorneys that are coming in uh, a lot of times it won't be the banks themselves they'll hire a title company or an attorney's office to do the searches for them and deeds in Wisconsin are supposed to be prepared by the attorneys um, so because they know how to do them they have the paperwork mm -hmm. and it's the safest way to do it just mm -hmm. to make sure that it's everything is done properly so what in general is the process of recording a deed what what, what are the steps involved what happens um, a deed is prepared again usually by an attorney or a title company uh, we don't have anything to do with the preparation of the documents mm -hmm. they then bring that or send it to our office uh, everything is recorded in number order in our office. We have to be careful with that. Mm -hmm. We check the documents over to make sure that they meet the statutory requirements and, and that all signatures are on them and everything that's required. Then they are receipted through our system. They are scanned into the system so that the image is, is available to be seen. Uh, they are indexed. The information is put into the typed into the computer and they are verified to make sure that what was entered is correct and then at that point um, once everything is done then they are sent back to whoever we are instructed to send them back so it's quite a process it takes about four weeks right now to return a document and a very important process I mean mm -hmm. recording those documents and having those in a safe place right. uh, a lot of money and and uh, mm -hmm. yeah, people's lives I mean really often the biggest investment they make is buying a home or buying some property and, and pretty important service to provide. Right, the statutory fees um, are all set. And I don't know if you want to talk about that, Ellen, a little bit more. Well, if someone has, has a situation where they come in or get that recorded, and then I'm going to turn it over to Chairman Gehring here, mm -hmm. I know that there is a fee charged, and as you just alluded to, that's a statutory fee? Right, all the fees are they're consistent throughout the state. They are set by the state statutes on what we can charge for a recording for a copy um, for your vital, your birth, marriage, and death certificates. Mm -hmm. The search, um, the searching, if we assist in the search, that's all, it's all, it's not like we can say as a county, okay, we want $10 for this, you know. Mm -hmm. um, pretty much it's all, it's all set by the state, by the legislators, and it's the same in every county. Very good, thank so. you. Mm -hmm. We've talked a little bit about recording mortgages and deeds, but your office also does provide other services. I was born in Sheboygan County. What if I wanted to get a copy of my birth certificate? How would I do that? Well, Bill, I just <laughs> happen to have a copy along with me. Um, you can come into our office from 7 or 8 till 5 every day, Monday through Friday, and we have these nice forms you can fill out. Um, we, need a, we would need a pro proper identification. 
Um, you can fill out the form and, and we can um, get you a certi certified copy within, usually it takes about five minutes. And that's the same with a certified marriage record or, or, or a death, death certificate. Um, you also, if you don't want to come into the office, um, we have the forms online on our website, on the Sheboygan County website, www.co.sheboygan.wi.us. Hey, took me a while. Impressive. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the forms are available on there. Um, it's one of the um, one of the three forms, or we have quite a few forms on there, but the death, marriage, and birth certificate forms are on there, and you can send it in the mail, and with along with your check, and um, of course we always need the money, mm -hmm. uh, and then we return them back. We process them and return them back um, to the requester. So. What type of documentation would you require, like a driver's license? Right, or? correct. For, for identification, a pictured driver's license um, would, be, would be sufficient, or an ID, the Wisconsin IDs. Or okay. And then why typically do people need a copy of their birth record? What? Well, um, years ago, you probably didn't need it as much as now, but now, I mean, if you want to open a bank account, you have to have a birth certificate. If you want to get a passport, if you want to get your license, if you want to get married, if you want to get a job before you're 16 or 18, you know, for work permits, uh, to register for school, you need a birth certificate. For just about anything for traveling, you need a birth certificate. Um, for just about anything that you do nowadays, you are going to have to be, you are going to be required to have a certified birth certificate. Um, just you, even a, a bank account, is that what you said? You need a birth certificate for that? Or well, to get it? your social security number, you need to have the birth okay. certificate. Okay. I forgot social security. It was one of the most important ones, but to get your social security number, you need to have a birth certificate. So, and you need your social security number to open up a bank account. Okay. So, so yep. It's very important. It's a very vital part of that office, mm -hmm. and it's um, we issue a lot of cer certified birth certificates. Okay. Shifting gears a little bit, more and more people are interested in genealogy. Can your office help people in their genealogical search? How how would you help them? We do help a lot of people with their searches. Um, what they do is they can come into our office. We are open from eight until five, and. There are certain searching hours that we have set as far as when we assist people, if we have to help them with the books, because we, most of our records in our office are all, have all public access. The public can come in and see just about anything. We do have some of the uh, birth and the death and the marriages that have confidential information on them, so the public doesn't get to see that part of the record, and thus we have to assist them if they need to look at that record. But with family history, for the most part, they're looking at older records. Um, they don't need to have anything covered up, so they can pretty much look at those themselves. They would just come in. There's an application they would fill out, and um, we would then show them how to use the records. We have indexes that they would search first to see what records are in our office. And they can look at the actual records themselves, and they can write down any information off of those records that is public. And they don't have to pay for that part of it. If they would like a copy of what is on our records, then it's, there's the fees, again, are set um, for those. But there is, besides the birth, death, and marriage records, there is all the land records that they can search back. And all of our records go to about 1850. They start roughly in the 1850s. Um, so with land, they can search it back to see who owned their piece of property back most of the time to the government. They can see that. Um, and a lot of people will do that. For the most part, though, we have people that come in and just want to look at the birth, death, and marriage records and, and search their families. And sometimes they won't find a record and they'll wonder why and most of the time it's because Wisconsin didn't start uh, putting records on file until 1907. They didn't get good at recording them until the 1930s. So a lot of times there's gaps in a family that they just didn't come to town and record them for some reason. A lot of times they, when they did come they would record whole families 
in there. So we have a lot of information. Okay. Is any of the like birth and death record stuff automated or do you have to look through a, a manual index or file? Most of it is a manual index. We typed everything in. It, in the mm -hmm. beginning it was handwritten and then we mm -hmm. started typing. Um, we do now have, we've just started to automate some of it. Mm. We have gone onto a, a access program where we enter the, the volume and page of where you can find a certain per person's record and they can take that information and then go to the book itself and look at it. But that's still, we still print those out on paper mm -hmm. and put them in a binder. Uh, we just don't have the, the computers to have sure. them looking it up themselves yet. Right. Uh, we talked a little bit about the county's website. Is there other information available on the website mm -hmm. for your we, office? Sorry. Um, we actually have, um, all, you can, instructions for filling out your real estate transfer returns, um, checklist for recorded documents to make sure you have, we have instructions on what is the proper statutes, accepted state, state statutes. This, um, we have um, Attorney General's opinion on re-recording information that would be, you know, vital to when you want to uh, bring a document in. Uh, we have maps on file. You can um, certified. You can look up certified survey maps, subdivision plats, um, condominium plats, and cemetery plats. And we also have um, UCC financing statements. Um, again, the birth, death, and marriage certificate or uh, forms uh, request, the fee schedules and uh, escrow application, and the application for uh, remote access. If um, we have a contract out on, on, if you would like to, instead of coming into the office, you can get information remotely. So. How does that remote access work? Does that cut down people coming into the office? Does it save the county? money or been a money maker for the county? <laughs> it does cut down a lot on people coming into the office. They don't, they're not required to come in. Uh, if you want, we have two different types of remote. One is called tapestry, which is more for the occasional user. You know, if somebody wants to go out and just look up some information maybe once a week or, or less, uh, they can go to the site called tapestry. It's landrecords.net is the actual website for it. And there they would search. They have to pay a fee for that. Our information is on that site. It is not the county's site, mm -hmm. but our information is accessible from that site. The other one is called uh, Laredo, and that is more for your attorneys and your title people, the ones that use it daily and use it a lot during the day. There is a monthly fee for that. Um, it's based on how many minutes there's different levels and it's based on how many minutes you actually would want to use it during the month's time as to what you would pay. And there's a contract that they would sign and that is out on the website or they can get it from our office for that. Um, tapestry, there's no contract. You just go to the site and, and you can use it. Okay, thank you. Very good, we've covered a lot of ground and one area I'd like to go back to just for a second is birth certificates, because obviously people living in Sheboygan County, they weren't all born here. And I anticipate there may be some people watching this program who will think, well, geez, you know, I really ought to pick up a copy of my birth certificate, or I'm thinking about going to Canada or Europe mm -hmm. and need to get that birth certificate. What if they weren't born in Sheboygan County or, or if they're retired and you know they've been all around the country, how challenging how challenging is it to get that birth certificate? Um, it's not at all. It, if you know what county you were born in, um, most of the counties in, in Wisconsin anyways, or most even in, within the state, uh, United States, has a website you can go to. Um, you contact that county or you, you can actually come into our office and we have numbers for, you know, like the states where they can call the state, find out what, you know, what, get a number for their county. And, and request a birth certificate. If okay. We have forms, and I guess maybe I just want to go back. Mm -hmm. I had a gentleman that called me um, two weeks ago and was looking for a marriage certificate from Menominee, Michigan, and was asking me if I could get it for him. I said no, mm -hmm. but you know I did call there, and I got found out the information for him, what he needed. So it's pretty standard, even in, even in Michigan, except for she said we don't have forms. So I 
scratched my name out on, on our form, and I and I gave it to him, and he sent it to her and got his his marriage certificate. I mean, their fees are different than ours and stuff, but um, it's pretty it's pretty good. I think um, most of them are. It's a it's a national, you know, no matter where you go within the if you're I think you're from you know from California if you're from California, and you know the county you're in, you just contact that register of deeds. Um, or the state, and um, they would, you know, make sure that you got your. You actually just, if you don't have a form, sorry, I should really say that. You just state your name, your birth date, parents' name. You can write it on a on a on a note. We a letter form. We get them all the time, um, and how many copies you want, and if you know what the fees are, because I don't think anybody is going to give you that that information without paying for it. Um, first, but you can send it to them, and um, most of the time that'll take care of it. So whether it's a marriage license or a birth certificate, they may be able to get on the website and contact that county directly in another state, and if they're uncertain or not quite sure how to do that or don't have access to a website, they can contact your office and you'll point them in the right direction. Give them yep. Excellent. Yes. Excellent. Um, You've talked a little bit now about the roles and responsibilities of the office and really from A to Z from a standpoint of the importance of the documents you're handling. But some viewers might be wondering, well, just how busy are these folks? How many, how many documents actually come through that office on any given year? Any, you know, I'm sure you have a flavor for that. Is, is it hundreds? Is it thousands? What are we talking about? Well, if we, on an average day, I would say um, we get between 100 to two, 150 to 200 documents of the documents itself, that is, does not include the birth, marriage, and uh, death certificate requests that we have. Um, but I would, and some days, you know, can be, some days you can stand at that counter for, you know, the whole day and you have people coming in. You can be, you can be doing anywhere from 50 to 100, I would say, birth certificates. Um, sometimes, you know, we, of course, we get requests through the mail also, so it all depends. It just some, you know, but we do a lot of documents. I would say, on the average, at least 300 between both the mortgage and deeds and and vital records. 300. 300 a day. day. Yep. Wow. I mean, so that adds. It's up a lot of paperwork. It is a lot of paperwork, and and you mentioned early on, and I know your department takes some pride in that, and you should. You're you're the only department that isn't relying on property tax levy to offset or supplement your operations. And you talked briefly about the fees. So anyone who comes into your office, whether it's a birth certificate or a marriage license or recording a deed or a mortgage, there's a state established fee that they need to pay in order to have that document recorded or get a copy of it. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And generally, what are we talking about? What, what, what are the range of some of the fees that are charged? Well, um, for the recording fees are, it's $11 for the first page and two dollars for each additional page of the same document. That's just to record a deed, a mortgage, whatever type of document it is. Then there's the fees set for the trans, what we call a transfer fee. Mm -hmm. um, that is three dollars per thousand of the value of the property being transferred. That is also set by statute and collected. The birth records are twelve dollars for one certified copy, three dollars for each additional one. The, the marriage and the death certificates are $7 for the first certified copy, $3 for each additional one. Um, okay. So if folks don't like how much they're being charged, you're not the ones to complain right. to because it's, it's in the statutes and really it's a state legislative matter. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Well, we only have a couple of minutes uh, remaining and Ellen, as you said, you've been in the job now for about a year and I know that between you and Nyla, it's been a, a seamless transition. What are, your, what are your impressions as you, as you look back the last year and do you have any goals or things you'd like to achieve as we go forward? Yes, I do and thank you for that because I, I always forget to tell, this, you know, to tell people how great my staff is. Um, they have been supportive since I started, um, have helped out, have answered my questions and I have asked a lot and still do. Um, so I really, really appreciate Nyla and the staff. They have just been wonderful. Um, we do have some goals. Nyla and I have been working towards. Um, uh, we, we shortly after I started, we we did we did uh, uh, electronic transfer returns where we were getting uh, the, the real estate property 
returns electronically. And now we are looking at doing e-recording, which is another form of um, bringing documents in through, only through the email. Um, the documents will come in, and it's going to cut down some on paperwork a little bit, hopefully a little bit um, less chance or error, though we're almost perfect. Not quite, but we're almost. Um, we, I have to say that those girls are pretty good with their, uh, you know, there's a, the error margin is very small. But the e-recording is something that's really starting to come through, and we're working on that, hopefully um, trying to get that together by, uh, get it in place by sometime early in 2007. And I have a goal to try and uh, get us some money in a different way, or not money in, but a different way of paying through uh, credit cards and debit cards. Currently, we only take cash or check. Mm. And um, Make sometimes it easier for people. it's easier for people, yeah. right, to do the, the credit. I'm trying to work on something with that. But mm -hmm. So those are our goals for 2007. And of course, um, to try and continue to do our work on our customer service and and um, keep the county taxpayers happy. Outstanding. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you both here today, and, and a lot of Thank lot you. going on in the Register of Deeds office. A lot of very important work that most people take for granted unless it impacts them directly. But appreciate the work you do and and. Uh, Register of Deeds, Ellen Schleicher, Deputy Register of Deeds, Nyla Bourne. <laughs> thank you for joining us today. Thank, thank you. you. On behalf of the Sheboygan County Board and Chairman Bill Gearing, again, my name is Adam Payne, County Administrator. Thank you for joining us. We like having these monthly programs to keep you aware of the different departments we have in county government. As you know, 23 departments, $155 million, a lot going on. Next month, we'll have our new Highway Commissioner, Greg Schnell, here to talk about what's going on with the Highway Department. Until then, best wishes and happy holidays. <music>